Is your DB9 piddling? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to replace the windshield wa washer fluid bottle. It's buried down here in the um, fender well. Why would you need to replace the windshield washer fluid bottle? Well, a very common fault on uh, the early DB9s, probably the other advantages as well in the DBS, is that the water bottle uh, cracks. Uh, it gets a stress crack somewhere in the upper uh, chamber area and when you fill it, you end up getting water pouring out on the floor. So just to demonstrate, um, just gonna top up my washer fluid here. And you get the very unsightly, immediate piddling of the car. So uh, even though the, uh, the washer system still works, right, because of the cracks near the top, uh, it still holds the water in the bottom uh, chamber, but you get this mess every time you fill up the you go to fill up the washer fluid, and you may not know exactly where uh, the crack is. So we're going to go over um, how to change this. It's pretty straightforward. It takes probably an hour, and you don't need many skills or tools to do it. So let's get started. Parts-wise, we pretty much just need uh, a replacement windshield fluid washer bottle. Um, when you buy this from Aston Martin, uh, this is what you get. It comes pre-configured with the headlight washer pump, the wind skewing washer pump, and the level sensor. So it's an, uh, not an inexpensive unit, but it's uh, the actual white plastic body is clearly bespoke to the Aston Martin. This is, uh, you know, fits in all the nooks and crannies that happen to exist inside the tight space of the fender well. Um, I've had a look though, uh, there are Ford part numbers on these uh, washer pumps. So um, if you check out the companion blog article, I'll have some close-up photos and the part numbers. If you just have a pump failure, uh, you can actually um, uh, remove just the pump and uh, change it out without having to change the whole bottle. Um, another thing you're probably going to need is some replacement windscreen washer fluid. We need just a few tools uh, to swap out the washer bottle. Uh, we need a 10 millimeter socket, extension and ratchet uh, to take out some of the bolts. We need, this is going to be very important, a 10 millimeter ratcheting combo wrench. Uh, the third bolt, as you'll see in the video, is absolutely a witch to get loose. So having one of these bendy angled ratcheting combo wrenches is going to be essential. Uh, uh, also, I have a small magnet for retrieving this bolt when it falls out. Uh, not essential if you don't have the magnet, you can get by without it. Uh, flat blade screwdriver for tightening up the filler neck. Uh, maybe a smaller flat blade screwdriver for prying off the old um, uh, fluid hoses. An inspection light will be very handy to help you uh, uh, get your work done. A funnel for filling the fluid uh, afterwards, shop rag. And over here, um, <laughs> you need to drain the old tank if there's any fluid left in it. So. I have my trusty drip tray uh, that I can lay down under the vehicle and then I had uh, a 10 quart pail which was about the right size for draining out a full bottle. So let's get started taking the uh, old washer bottle out. There's some prerequisites you need to go through obviously to get to this point. Um, you don't need to have a lift and you don't need to take the wheel off. Aston Martin officially says you need to um, just turn your wheel all the way to the right uh, you need to get your car up at least on, a, on jack stands at the front. I suppose you could even do it off jack stands, uh, but you need to remove the wheel arch liner. So you can see here on the floor, I've removed the entire wheel, wheel arch liner. You can check out my uh, other video on how to do that. But uh, they say you could just redo, remove the rear screws of the wheel arch liner bend it out and around so you don't actually have, have to take the front half of it off and then obviously that would give you the access you'd need but for photography and filming here today there was no way we could do that so we took the whole fender liner out um, we took the wheel off and uh, you could have it up on jack stands on your driveway um, 
So that's probably what I would have done is just take the whole thing off, put it on jack stands and uh, take this front wheel off. Uh, so that's the prerequisites out of the way. Um, Aston Martin, because this problem was so prevalent, uh, actually released field service bulletin SB0285. Uh, it was essentially in a, a much more detailed procedure on how to inspect the leaks of the washer uh, fluid bottle. And they say actually at the very beginning of this, it supersedes uh, the section in the owner's, uh, the workshop manual, section 1.16. So the uh, workshop manual is not the master document the field service bulletin is. Uh, in the companion blog article, I'll have a link to this. Um, so I'm basically going to be following this procedure for the most part uh, as we do this. Uh, step one is a pretty obvious one. Uh, you can actually see my existing water level. It's uh, maybe hard to catch on film here, but uh, that's where my water level is. So my crack is probably somewhere just up from here. And I actually know it's up in uh, the back here. A little orientation in here. So here's this uh, rubber filler neck. This is where the water comes down from up in the fender, fender liner uh, or up in the uh, engine to well, it kind of is a flexible hose. It connects with a, a banjo clamp, a, a worm gear clamp to the top of the bottle. All the cables are essentially just squashed into these little embossed grooves in the plastic bottle. Here's the um, headlight washer uh, pump. There's a quick connect fitting to the uh, plumbing that goes up to the front. This is actually the windscreen washer pump here. It has its own uh, different connector style. And then tucked away on the side here is the um, level sensor. Um, so all of this stuff uh, will get disconnected, but step one is we need to get the water lines. We need to drain this thing out. So um, the way I'm gonna do that is that these things can rotate um, because they're, they poke into a spigot at the bottom. And I'm just gonna use a small flat blade screwdriver and I'll maybe get some extra light in here for, to um, pry the hose off the pump. So on the floor, just for, I have my uh, plastic drip tray and I've got a bucket ready to catch the fluid that's going to start cooling out. So I don't know why. So that one's going to take a long time. <laughs> It's draining, but it's more or less drooling. So let's disconnect the, um, uh, the windscreen washer pump. Now this is a quick connect fitting, um, and basically you squeeze it at the top, or basically at the bottom here, and then you pull it towards you. And I'm getting a much better flow rate. And we're just gonna wait for a minute. Fast forward time. So while that's still draining, um, let's go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector to the windscreen pump. So this one's pretty easy. You just press this little um, metal bar in, keep squeezing it and wiggle up. And uh, uh, this is my favorite type of Aston connector. So that's all there is to releasing it. Um, that's cool because now what, uh, with the hose disconnected and the electrical connector, I'm going to prise this pump up a little bit and essentially I'm going to get it to pop out of the um, bottom and that's going to let this drain a little faster. So there's my uh, pump removed. And that's strictly I'm doing that so that water can bubble up out of the uh, reservoir body. Um, and not have to go through the pump itself. All right, uh, we can tug back that harness out of the, the groove. I'm gonna do the same for this hose that goes for the uh, washer fluid for the uh, headlights. Pull that one back out and get it loose. You can also get the connector for the this pump out. And uh, 
we can essentially do the same trick here. Now I'm not qu quite sure how this electrical connector comes out. So I'm probably going to make my life easier and pry that pump up and out as well. Now this one has a much longer spigot. Just make sure you aren't going to break anything off up above. So now that we have access to the essentially the back of that clip, there's uh, basically a little, you know, you're going to push in on this part and uh, push in and up a little bit and that releases. Uh, so I pushed in on these little uh, lower uh, tabs that seem to be in there and that released the pump. From the looks of it, that's the exact same connection that the uh, sending unit, uh, the level sensor uses, but they talk about waiting to disconnect that till you have the pump loose and the body coming out. So we're gonna wait on uh, that one for a bit. All right, so uh, big mess on the floor, but uh, basically got it drained out. Uh, so it's a little bit lighter. Now I'm gonna go after the three bolts. So one's really easy up top, one's really easy inboard, and one is absolutely a bitch <clears throat> uh, uh, down the side here that may be uh, really hard to see, but uh, I need to full disclosure here. When I took my fender liner off, uh, this bracket, which it epoxies on right here, came off uh, with it. Um, I don't know if it was from some damage at the body shop when it was just resprayed, uh, but you're gonna have this metal flange there. <laughs> Conveniently, <laughs> I don't, and I can get my arm in here, uh, but you're not gonna be able to do that quite as smoothly as I am. So uh, rather than showing you a way to do it going down the side, I'm gonna do it going over the top. You should be able to get your hand uh, tucked in past this clip where you can get one of your fingertips to touch the head of the bolt. Uh, presumably you're lying under the car and you can get your arm in on this angle. Um, as long as you can get your fingertip on this lower one to touch it, uh, life's going to be good because you're going to be able to come in over the top with a bendy 10 millimeter combination wrench and uh, ratchet it out. So to get access up from above, there's this piece of foam in here and you can just tuck it back uh, to get yourself a space and I can just get my fingers down. <coughs> or uh, if it's like my car, this foam is just sitting in there <laughs> loose. There's a piece of double-sided tape that gave up long ago, um, so I'm just going to take it out. Uh, so I'm going to use a 10 millimeter combination wrench and get it set the right way for loosen. And I'm gonna go in from above. And I've got my lower hand where I can just get my middle finger to touch the tip of the bolt. Of course, this is gonna be kind of useless coverage video wise, but I'm doing this bolt first, because if I'm gonna have problems, I wanna have it on the hardest one. No sense in taking the other two out and having all the weight hanging on uh, it. Well, that was definitely challenging. And there's our bolt out. Okay, so we've got our lower out. Let's get our other lowers um, out. While we're in here, probably a word of caution, don't screw up these wires. This is the primary engine computer, and if you nick or break any of that wiring, uh, you will have a world of problems. So just stay well clear of it. The main harness is right here, and you're working right beside it. So just be careful. out and 
since I'd already loosened it. So we're still connected with the filler neck. So I'm hoping that once I release this one, uh, it'll become more flexible. Yeah, you know, it just dropped down a little bit. It's, it's still sitting uh, on the fender well stuff, but I'll be able to maybe get twist and get access to this electrical connector a little better. Uh, now that it's dropped down a little bit, I can get at the banjo clamp. Loosened off so that I can pry up the hose. There we go. The hose up and off. So the last thing we have is our electrical connector. And I'm going to see if I can. Swing it out gently here. And this is the same style as the other one, so it should be just pushing down a little bit. There we go. And pull it forward. And a little finagling. There's it. It's out. And I'm just going to do a quick dump. So uh, get a shot in here. Look at all the garbage that's coming out of that. And you can actually see inside algae. Uh, so this thing was full of crusty, gross stuff. Um, and I bet you that's potentially been plugging up uh, some of the lines in the, uh, the pump. So, um, yeah, you can see bands of actual uh, grody in there. Um, <clears throat> well, we've got it out now. Let's go look for our crack. And there it is, clear as a bell. Right in there. So that looks like a stress crack of some sort, but basically all the fluid would just dr drain out uh, of that spot, and that's why the water level was uh, holding there. So in another video, you may see me take a crack at repairing this bottle and uh, refurbishing it, because if you have a crack like that, it's a shame to spend a couple of hundred dollars and replace the whole thing if the, everything else is working. So uh, uh, I may try a bench repair of this unit. So you might be a better mechanic than me, but I'm really worried about getting this back bolt started again once the bottle's back in place. Um, you know, the it's an upward blind shot. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I could get it started with a magnet on a stick. I can certainly get the hole, but you know, to get the first turn, is gonna be tricky as heck. Um, and then I had sort of uh, an epiphany. What if we put a slot in the tab on the water bottle? So if <clears throat> this is already slotted for adjustment, what if we could make it so that it, we could basically just slip it over the stud? And uh, you might consider it heresy, but I'm about to cut a slot. Uh, so that, now this is polypropylene, it's, it's not brittle. Um, so let's go over to the bench and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. So basically I need a slot that's at least as wide as the, um, the bolt. And I'm just going to eyeball it with a sharpie. And I told you, I know how to draw straight lines. Um, and then I'm gonna put on some safety glasses. And I have a Dremel with a thin cutting blade. You could cut this out lots of different ways. You could use uh, 
a hacksaw. Uh, you could use a knife, uh, a utility knife if you were uh, very patient or if you happen to have a Dremel, you can do this. And then you just need to be sure your slot's big enough, and mine isn't quite big enough to run that down. So I'm just going to enlarge it. And this is really, so there we go. And it doesn't matter. The part of the bracket that's doing all the work is the front. Uh, the back, uh, you know, it's even it's slotted. So the back part of the washer wasn't even going to be pressing on the back flange here probably anyways. So this is really not a big deal, but it is going to make life so much easier. Okay, well, with the uh, modification done to the uh, slot uh, added to the back tab now, um, <clears throat> let's start with, I'm just going to put this bolt in uh, a solid, turn. I don't want to do it way up, but I want to make sure it doesn't fall out. So that's like one revolution. Uh, another tip is that this flange is kind of bendy. Uh, so I'm going to bend it inward a little bit so that I can swoop it in uh, to that over the bolt a little easier. I've also <clears throat> looked at, you know, when you get it, this probably is all pushed right in like it's ready to use, but I'm going to flare that out a little bit. I've also flared out this one a little bit so I can get the hose on and then I'll push them back into place. So the first step is we're going to uh, offer this up into the space. We've got to work our way around all the brackets and make sure we keep our lines. And this stays in front of the metal flange. So we've got to get our filler neck up and over at the top here. It's not too hard. And bring that around. Let's get that tightened up. I'm using my left hand to hold the back edge of the clamp in place so it's not flopping all around on me. All right, I'm just gonna make that good and snug. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I think I'm gonna be able to get the side uh, connector on, on here next. So we'll just get some of these hoses in place a little better. <clears throat> go down there, that one go that way, that one goes that way. All right, so. And that clicks on solid. Um, so next I'm going to try and get my back flange to engage and I'm going to put on my Michael Jackson glove because my hand's getting pretty raw. And all I'm going to do is get back in there and I'm going to just try and guide this over the bolt underneath the washer. go. So it may be impossible to see it, but so basically we can just see that I've got the, uh, uh, slip the slot down and I'm on the right side of the washers. So we're, we're good to go with that back bolt.
So that's really my strategy here now is I want to get all the bolts started. We'll get this easy guy at the bottom next. So that's just loosely started and we'll get the one at the top here. Okay, so just a, because this has probably been bumped around, this is one of the fender liner clips. Uh, and it could get all cockeyed where it's covering up the actual hole it has to go through. So you might take a moment and realign that if it got bumped. So now I'm going to snug up the, uh, the easy two. And they'll take the weight uh, of the unit. And then all that hard to reach one is going to be doing is just stabilizing the back. So just the one really tough bolt to tighten up now. And this process is just going to be the same. I'm going to reach over the top. Well, I got to tell you, that's not my favorite bolt in the world. It's not going to be getting a Christmas card from me, but uh, that's all done up properly. It's nice and snug. And one thing I spotted while I had my body jammed in there this hose here, I've accidentally popped it loose of a clip, which would be bad. <laughs> so it basically snaps in up there. So you might want to double check that when you're all done. Well, next up, we're just going to redo some of the electrical connectors. So uh, this one should be pretty straightforward. And we're going to do our speed connection. That's that. And then our connection onto our washer windshield screen pump. All right, and that rotates back into place. That clicks up. So now we need to deal with the slack. So I've kind of got that one sitting nicely organized. Now I'm going to rotate this over properly and push it into the slot. Now I've got this sitting where it wants to lay naturally and tuck that one in. So our uh, filler neck tube is connected, electrical connector is tight, electrical connector is tight, electrical connector is tight, um, hose is on good, quick release hose is on good and all three bolts are tightened. So um, the bottle's reinstalled, uh, but before I put the fender liner in, the next thing we should do is check and see if it holds water and doesn't leak. Okay, I've lowered the car down again so that I can get to the refill spout, and I've got my coolant, or my washer fluid, and let's uh, start putting some back in and try to monitor for, see if anything's leaking. As we saw when we drained it, it held just short of 10 quarts. All right, so uh, other than I spilled some at the top and that's dripping down at the back, um, looks like I've got a leak coming from the quick connect fitting for the uh, headlight washer. <laughs> All right, when uh, we left off, we had a leak. We actually had two leaks. Um, one was the quick connect fitting to the washer screen pump. And uh, when I popped that off to basically drain out the tank, I basically just gave everything a wipe, looked inside the socket, wiped it out, snapped it back on even before the tank was even a third drained, and that was it. So I must have had a bit of dirt somehow on the, um, uh, the quick connect. So that was solved. But after that was solved, I still had a drip that was coming down off the back of the bottle as it turned out, it was the filler neck. And I ended up having to reposition the filler neck and retighten the clamp. 
Um, so I don't know if uh, uh, I just had it on cockeyed or something, but essentially I had two leaks. Uh, but don't panic, just take your time, uh, figure out the source and maybe try reinstalling that bit. And uh, we're all buttoned up dry now. Uh, a weird artifact is there seems to be like a bit of a, a bubble. I'm filled right up to the filler top of the cap. There's a little bit of an air pocket in here, but I think that's because it's full over there. There's some sort of baffle or there's just a little bubble of air um, tucked in this corner. Uh, but anyways, job done. Um, one thing I still got to do is put back my foam pad that I took out to get room for that bottom bolt. And that just tucks back in there. That's really sound deadening. And uh, so with the uh, no drips and the bottles in place, uh, one last test before we put the uh, little fender liners in. Let's actually try, check and see if the motors and pumps work and we actually get sprays uh, working. So the washers took a few cycles because we'd already drained out all the water from all the hoses. So the original, the sprayers didn't spray right away. Uh, had to, you know, do the washer fluid thing a few times. Uh, but now everything's all primed up and going. Uh, so success. Um, tank changed. Uh, time to reinstall my fender liner, put my wheel back on, torque my wheel nuts. Uh, you'll have videos for all, all of those steps up here. Um, so this is completely doable by uh, somebody in their driveway at home. And uh, hopefully this inspires you to take care of it if your car has been piddling on the floor. I'm hoping my Princess Piddles will no longer piddle washer fluid when I fill her up. So if you like videos like these, um, please go ahead and subscribe um, uh, and you'll get notified when I make new ones. Uh, I'll have a link to the parts down in my companion blog article here. Uh, up here you'll probably see some uh, interesting video that's related. It'll probably be something like me trying to fix the old washer bottle. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.